If an amino acid is not glucogenic, say it's ketogenic, that does not mean that we can't actually use it to make glucose. It just means that we can't kind of sustainably or on net use it to make glucose. I'll discuss the details more in a minute, but it's kind of like one of those give a penny, take a penny jars. If you have, you know those jars at like, like the counter where people leave their extra change and then if people need change, they take it. Say you keep putting in two cents at a time. If, as long as you keep putting two cents in at a time, you keep having a lot of these coins in there, all's good. But now say you were to take out four cents to make the change to get your purchase. If you were to keep taking out four cents but stop putting in cents, then you would drain your, your jar. Similarly, if you were to keep putting in two cents, but for every two cents you put in, you took out four cents, you'd still be draining your jar. If you were to keep putting in four cents and then taking out four cents, well, all's fine. You can keep the jar at a steady level. And if you put in more than four cents and take out four cents, well, you keep ending up on net positive. So this is kind of like the difference between a ketogenic or a glucogenic amino acid. We can break them down into parts that are all going to kind of end up in the same central pool, and then our cells can't really tell apart what came from where, except for like compartmentalization and stuff. But assuming that you're breaking all these things down into these little pieces, and then kind of having this central pool of pieces, your cells don't know what came from where. They just you just have kind of a net balance that you have to keep track of. So when we have these these ketogenic amino acids, they're getting broken down into acetyl-CoA or acetoacetyl-CoA, and these can be joined up to make ketone bodies, which can provide energy to fuel the brain. They can also be used to make lipids and this sorts of thing, but they can't on net be used to make glucose because they only have two carbons, and if you were to use go to make glucose, you'd need two more than two carbons. The way that we typically talk about going to make glucose is we'd be taking something out of the citric acid cycle. More specifically, we'd be taking out a malate. Sometimes you might see that oxaloacetate is taken out, but what happens is that malate can get out of the mitochondria, whereas oxaloacetate can't. So malate gets transported out of the mitochondria and converted into oxaloacetate that then could be used to make glucose. In the case of our ketogenic amino acids, well, if you get broken down into acetyl-CoA, these can still enter the TCA. Remember, that's how pyruvate normally enters the TCA as well. But in this case, then you're only putting in two carbons, and so if you use one of those reactions where you're taking things out of the pathway, you need a reaction where you're putting things back in the pathway. You need an anaplerotic reaction. Now, pyruvate is glucogenic because you can also enter, pyruvate can also enter the TCA in the form of oxaloacetate. This allows it to regenerate components that are needed if you keep drawing out components. With acetyl-CoA, however, here you're only putting in a two-carbon piece, and then if you go and you take out malate, well, malate, that's going to be four carbons, so you're taking out four carbons, you're only putting in two carbons, so on net, you're not able to sustainably make glucose that way. So different amino acids can be either glucogenic or ketogenic, depending on what you get when you break them down. If you break them down into something that's longer than two carbons, and if you break them down, you can think of it like as if you break it down into something, that, into something that's already in the TCA, then you're replenishing components of that citric acid cycle. But if you break it down into something that's outside of the TCA, something that needs to enter the TCA, but in order to enter the TCA, it has to have components present. So in order to get acetyl-CoA into the TCA, we have to have oxaloacetate present. If oxaloacetate isn't present, you can't get in. So you need a way then to regenerate that oxaloacetate. And remember, you actually need to regenerate the malate, but malate gets converted into oxaloacetate, and because it's a cycle, it kind of like all goes through together. So you don't have to specifically put in oxaloacetate, you don't need to specifically put in malate, you just need to put in one of these components of the citric acid cycle, and then they can get incurred or converted. Now, I'm not saying that the source of the fuel doesn't matter. But the reason why it kind of can matter whether the carbons are coming from ketone bodies, whether the carbons are coming from sugar, whether they're coming from fats or proteins, that has to do with more of the regulatory side of things. So if you have things entering at different places, they're using different enzymes, they might be bypassing certain enzymatic regulation steps. So there are things like that that can make it so that kind of the cells respond differently 
depending on what they're breaking down. But those breakdown products, as long as they're broken down in the same location, well, now those can be used to make a bunch of different things. Kind of like how your Lego set can be used to make a bunch of things, and you could break down a bunch of different Lego pieces in order to get this general stock of Legos that then you can go do things with. So, glucogenic versus ketogenic, yeah, you can still make glucose from things that are ketogenic, you just, in order to keep making glucose, you'd have to keep putting stuff in more than you're taking out, so you can't sustainably on net make glucose from it. But if you were to, say, put a tracer onto your ketone body, don't be surprised if you find it end up in that glucose, because, well, it can be used to make glucose, just not sustainably. And so you might see some, like, ketogenic diet stuff and things like this. I do not discuss dietary stuff at all. But I can tell you that unless you are have some metabolic disorder or whatever, don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. Just eat a well-balanced diet. You don't need all that keto stuff. 